start again. So we're back after my drink of water. Um, let's uh, let's talk with our uh, meeting host here. Um, if he can pull himself off of mute, there we go. So I am here. You are there. So tell me, how are you uh, enjoying the uh, conference so far? I'm really enjoying it. You know, I, I think we uh, talked very briefly earlier. I, I'm really excited because I, th I think what we're seeing right now is some really cool opportunities to connect people from, from different verticals and bring them together over a wide geographic area. You know, it's, it's going to be an exciting few months. And, you know, I think with all the challenges of COVID, you have to be resilient. You have to be agile. You got to make the changes when you got to make it. And, you know, like what you said earlier, you know, there, there's a great deal you have to rely on yourselves and you, you can't go out and be purchasing stuff off of shelves and, and whatnot. And I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a good conference. I'm really excited what CRT and DEMCON continues to do in the future. Really, really pumped. Really looking forward to it. Do you think that maybe the, um, the virtual concept might uh, uh, grow? Or, you know, it, do you think that once uh, COVID is, quote, over, uh, that we'll go back to the way things were before? Or do you think there's, you know, a, a blended approach coming? Well, you know, one thing I see now, I, I can't say specifically what about this conference in particular will do, but this is what I see as a kind of going across the industry and across the world, really, is that for the immediate future, it seems like virtual is here to stay. And when I say here to stay, I mean, for the next three years, mm -hmm. there will be some form of virtual going on, whether that's hybrid or completely virtual events. Now, what we also see is people like meeting face to face. They like that physical interaction. They like the humanity involved in that kind of interaction. Uh, so the route I see is I, I see that virtual will probably take a dominant role for about, you know, it could be up to a year. It could be as low as six months. Uh, but then after that, you'll probably have virtual events exist, coexist with live mm -hmm. events. There will be certain people who it's more economical to go to a virtual event. There will be yeah. certain people where it's easier, more convenient. There's also people that are concerned. They might have underlying health risks and virtual just works better. We also have people who realize that, you know, there is value to meeting face to face. Yeah. And I think for those people, they're biting at the bits to do that as soon as possible. Um, but I think that's kind of the opportunities we're seeing. And, you, and you'll see more live events focused on more local markets, I think now, instead mm. of broad international conferences. And you'll have virtual conferences that kind of fill that, you know, cross geopolitical, you know, kind of uh, environment landscape that you currently see. Right. Yeah, I, I like the uh, the economical uh, piece there because, you know, a lot of times, uh, and I've been through it, and, and maybe you have in uh, previous lives as well, where because of cost, I couldn't go to uh, a conference. You know, I was told, find something closer, and there never was. You right. know, now uh, the chance is, you know, I can still attend a conference that's halfway around the world, you know, and it's, you know, a quarter of the price. So now I can attend the, you know, the virtual conference. So, uh, and I like your, your, your part too of um, uh, mention, make, mentioning that virtual conferences could be much bigger, especially for local markets. Yeah. You know, you know another thing you got to think about as well, and, and, you know, we talked about this earlier is your ability to spread information to areas that otherwise wouldn't get it. You know, if you're able yeah. to service environments that, you know, for whatever reason, you can't physically visit, you know, not, not even virtual, not even in the area of conferences and whatnot, but, you know, not everyone can drive out to, you know, a lot of remote communities in the North, you know, not everyone can mm -hmm. go and physically meet there. So to provide a virtual alternative, I think is really cool. I think, I think the overall quality of people's lives is going to continue to increase. I think that spread of information, I think the internet was big. And then people learn how to make use of that internet. And I think what we're seeing is we're seeing people go through another iteration of making use of the, of the internet, being able to spread ideas, knowledge, ways of thinking. And I'm really excited. I'm pumped about it. I know well, COVID has its challenges, but yeah. super pumped. Well, it would be nice, you know, if there is a uh, internet revolution, so to speak, and I no longer have to receive pictures of people and what they eat for their dinner. You know, which, you know, those kind of posts that always end up on uh, Facebook and uh, other 
sites, you know, that's not really a great use of internet for, <laughs> from my perspective, no. but, <laughs> you know, I, and I do like your, uh, your uh, comment there about, uh, you know, some people are really chomping at the bit to have face-to-face -face meetings again. I know I would like to, you know, talk with uh, people face to face, um, and uh, I did. Now uh, I, I'm not sure if it's in my presentation tomorrow or if it's in a different one for somebody else. I won't mention who, um, but uh, they that introverts being at home are kind of thriving right now, you know, because they don't like getting up and going to the office, and you know, not all. You know, but uh, going to the office, you know, and interruptions and talk at the water cooler and everything. They'd rather just hunker down and get get to work. While extroverts are having a more difficult time with working from home because they don't have that social interaction. Like you were saying, they're they're the ones chomping at the bit to get back to the office. So they're you know, it's posing different challenges. Myself, I like working from home. Because, uh, you know, for the most part, I, I'm an introvert. You know, I, I do, uh, you know, if I went to a large gathering or something, I'm always sitting off to the side watching what's going on, you know, and talking to just a couple of people. You know, uh, unless I'm speaking on a on stage, then I get kind of animated and, I, you know, I become all, all kind of uh, ex an extrovert, so to speak, you know. Um, so it's interesting how people are uh, responding and working, you know, and using this virtual uh uh, technology and, and means to uh, bring people together you know it's uh, really different you know it, it's affecting people in a different way and, uh, and there's James James just joined us James Green Hopefully, hey Alex, how are you I'm doing well how are you I'm doing good thank you I heard someone talking about uh, food no food pictures so I was going to send you a picture of the quesadillas we made for dinner last night, but I guess I'll pass on that now. Well, that's funny you mentioned that because I was going to ask you I, I, if you're if you're following uh, James on uh, LinkedIn, anybody, you will have seen he posted some pictures from a previous conference where he had all this uh, delicious food on his desk, you know. <laughs> and I was actually going to ask you if you stopped in if you uh, still had some of that with you. <laughs> Uh, I do. I'm happy to send you some candy if that's uh, if that's what you need to get through the week. Absolutely. <laughs> so how, how are you doing overall? How are things? Uh, doing good. I think, you know, the last time you and I spoke, we talked, it was pre-COVID, right? So we talked about the nice light topic of global warming. Yes. We did, and, yeah. uh, and I think I was supposed to see you three or four times in person this year. I've been trying to follow you around the globe. Now we're virtual. So I thought I would just pop in, uh, say hi, see what you're up to, what you're talking about. And uh, I know I'll see you at BCI World as well. And I think you and I yeah. are scheduled to speak next month. Yeah, we're both, uh, we're both speaking there. Um, and uh, I think, do you speak today or is it tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I speak, uh, I speak today, this afternoon at 1.30, 1.35, 140, somewhere, somewhere in there. And what's your topic on that? So, uh, you know, it's interesting when, as you know, when you submit to speak for a topic, you submit it, uh, in this case, almost a year in advance, right? So yeah. uh, my initial topic was conquering the top five BCM roadblocks, um, but always wanting to make sure that content is relevant, right? I, I have overhauled the thing completely to look at the state of BCM, you know, through the lens, obviously, of COVID, because that's what we're all talking about. That's what's shaped our profession. So certainly, uh, a lot of this deck was written over the last 10 days to make it, you know, timely and hopefully relevant for every everybody as possible. And let's face it, things just keep changing, you know, on, on a daily basis, anytime you turn the news on, some, something has changed. You know, exactly. Or something new is, has been impacted. So one thing I did want to share with you because it's coming up Saturday is World Mental Health Day. Mm. So one of the roadblocks that I am talking about uh, and I want us to talk about as a profession, which is why, you know, I popped in today and crashed your, your conversation was the mental health of business continuity professionals, right? We're seeing a lot of people burn out. We're seeing mm. a lot of people struggle with an event that's on month nine. And I think it's really important for us to be able to do that self-assessment, 
how are we doing with our mental health? Are we okay? Do you need someone to talk to? You know, it's totally okay if your company has an EAP to use it. These are the type of times to use an EAP. These are the type of times to reach out to a colleague. Um, I've had lots of conversations in the background with people who are struggling, mm -hmm. right? Because you and I, we typically respond to an incident. It's a couple of days. It's a couple of weeks. Then we get to catch up and wind down and get some sleep. And for a lot of our uh, colleagues, we're on month nine, we're on month 10. And so we're, 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 I'm really seeing a lot of, of burnout. And I just wanted to put that out there for everyone with, you know, with COVID, with Saturday being World Mental Health Awareness Day, you know, it's a perfect time, I think, for us to have that kind of conversation. I, I, I think I agree with you. I think it's really important right now. I, I know um, a couple of uh, people that are on the front lines, you know, working in hospitals and old uh, uh, care homes. And, uh, you know, they're stressed, you know, they're, they're working long shifts, they're tired, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I asked their husbands or their wives, you know, going, well, how is so-and-so doing? And they're, they're saying she is struggling, you know, every day it's rough, you know, and yeah. he is struggling. And do you, it, with, with this, uh, upcoming Saturday, would you happen to have any direction where, you know, you know, like Alcoholics Anonymous, you have somebody who can, you know, sponsor you. It, with mental health, is there any of that kind of a thing as well that, you know, if for a husband or a wife whose partner is stressed, you know, working on the front line, is there any help they can get so they can also help, you know, their, their stress partner? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, first of all, where I kind of got into the field of mental health is I'm certified in mental health first aid which is uh, one of the coolest training classes I've ever taken. And I would recommend everyone if they can get into that program, you know, instead of physical first aid, it's mental health first aid, very powerful way to recognize, um, recognize symptoms and stressors of people and how to help them. I think a good resource, like I said, if, if, people who are listening, if their company has an EAP, if your spouse's company has an EAP, use it. And then there's a lot of organizations who always come in after disaster and help with uh, mental health. So the, when the Red Cross is on site, right, they help with a the disaster. They have those resources available now virtually for people who, like you said, are first responders or struggling with um, aspects of COVID. So you can, you know, you can certainly do Google searches for that. There's a lot of free resources out there and avenues to help people. Cause like you said, where even if we're not directly affected, if we have a family member or a spouse or someone who's a first responder or in yeah. business continuity, they're affected. It's, it's affecting, you know, the, everybody. Yeah. It, 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 it can go from one person to another. And, you know, there's even, you know, I, I know somebody who uh, started a business just before COVID, COVID you know, uh, really kind of took off in March. Yeah. Now they're uh, struggling in a different way because, you know, they didn't have really enough uh, uh, equity in their business and, you know, uh, client base and anything to really keep them going. And they're afraid they're going to lose their business. They could they lose their home, you know, so they're they're struggling and they're starting to um, you know, suffer, uh, you know, with being incredibly stressed, you yeah. know, and, um, you know, it, it, you don't have to, uh, have COVID to be affected by COVID. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, small businesses, startups, you're seeing people slow, you know, just things are slowing down. You're seeing uh, a liquidity crunch like we've never seen. That's a very stressful situation in the startup mm -hmm. stressful in the best of times let alone, like you said, during uh, a global pandemic. Yeah. So, so um, you're talking today at one o'clock, right? Uh, I think it's one forty. I think because they, they shrunk, you know, rightfully so. They, sh you know, all the hour sessions, they shrank to 40 minutes, which I think is a great idea. People's attention span is not as long when we're virtually. So one forty. I just looked it up, One forty to 220 is uh, when I'm speaking. And then for everyone, all the sessions are on demand. So if you miss a session or you're, 
you're in here chatting with Alex, you can catch up on stuff uh, later on, which I really like that idea. Yeah. So. Yeah. Me too, because I know, uh, you know, I have to keep talking for, uh, you know, for <laughs> how many hours till 3.30? I was going to say, you're on for the next four and a half hours, right? Yeah, so. sitting here, you know, in, in this, uh, you know, little office, you know, I have to talk for five hours, five and a half hours. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to uh, sit in on some of these, but I, I do want to uh, hear them afterwards, you know, and exactly. I wanted to hear your, your talk uh, as well. So, you know, all the best on it. You know? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, just out of curiosity, uh, what do you think of what's happening with COVID now? And you probably have an idea what I'm <laughs> to, you know, where, where things seem to be going. You know? Well, I think, you know, unfortunately in a lot of areas, you're starting to see the beginning of that second wave, right? Some areas that have opened up are starting to slow down and certainly you know here in the northern hemisphere as we enter our traditional cold and flu season i think there's a lot of people concerned you have that cyclical flu season every year regardless now you put a pandemic on top of it um, and some of our international clients are just planning like hey we're just gonna stay remote stay working from home through the spring just kind of push through that cold and flu season and hedge our bets on if there is a second wave or just a spike. Uh, I think there's a lot of, um, there's not as much fear as there was right in February and March, but still a lot of unknown and a lot of uncertainty. Yeah. I think, so. I think it's, it's a Google or Amazon or Facebook. One of, one of those kind of uh, uh, big uh, conglomerates that uh, said that, you know, everyone, you just, just stay home till the spring for now. And then we'll review things when we, when that time frame comes around. You know, yeah. Fa Facebook said, nothing. Facebook said probably no in-person conferences through next June, July. And then to your point, a lot of the big companies are saying work from home, work remote through next summer. So yeah. they're looking at a long uh, time horizon for sure. Yeah. Well, cause we don't know what's going on. And I think you, you know, you're right about the uh, second wave, you know, we're seeing it come, happen here in Ontario where I'm, I yeah. live, you know, it's starting to uh, go up. Um, we're seeing it all through Europe, um, obviously in the U S you know, throughout Canada and other places in the world, you know, I think that uh, initial fatigue uh, is setting in and uh, people got careless over the summer or, you know, thinking that, you know, uh, it's summertime we we should be okay. <clears throat> no. <laughs> Yeah, that's a problem. You saw that in the United States with the 1918 pandemic, right? There were three waves because of exactly of that fatigue that you spoke about. People were maybe diligent and mindful in the beginning, but after a while, it, the social distancing goes away, the mask and the, the things go away, and then you see these hotspot um, events, and you've seen it in, in the U.S. government, certainly. They've had certain events, and then those have become you know, trigger points for, mm -hmm. for COVID infections. So. I, do you think people uh, with this second wave uh, overall are more knowledgeable and a little bit uh, calmer now rather than uh, they were back in February, March when, uh, as, you know, to use your own word, there was all that fear and unknown. Yeah. So certainly living in, in Florida, right, I'm used to panic when a hurricane's coming and you have that run on the grocery stores and the pharmacies. And we saw that here in March and April, and we're not seeing that now. So I think people are starting to realize this is, you know, a reality and it is going to be for a while. So I'm certainly seeing just anecdotally in my personal life, uh, more people taking social distancing, wearing masks, preventative measures more seriously, mm -hmm. um, and just realizing that, you know, this is something that's not going to go away overnight. And even if a vaccine were to magically be created today, right, the distribution of that, all of those things take time. Yeah, that's so, the, you know, the vaccine still won't be ready till mid next year for everybody. That's right. And that's if it magically pops in today. Yeah. Right. And most, uh, you know, the FDA, I think your average clinical trial is two and two to three years. Yeah. So there's a, there's an event horizon on there. Yeah. So I think there's people, a lot of people overall showing less fear, but thankfully showing more awareness of, yeah. of yeah, I, I what's so. going on. 
Uh, I'm seeing that um, what, before I used to go uh, grocery shopping, you know, they'd let us in every so often and only yeah. so many people, everyone had a mask. Then you'd go up and down the aisles and everybody would be, you know, this far apart. Exactly. You know? Now you're seeing people actually wait, you know, and, you know, if someone, all the aisles, you know, no, it's one direction only in this aisle. And when you see someone come in the other direction, you know, the hand comes up, no, 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 go around. <laughs> you know, like the, people have the, the awareness now, a greater awareness. And I think that, uh, I don't want to use the word novelty, but it's that initial, oh, this is new. It's not going to bother me type thing. And yeah. as you said, like, no, this is going to be with us for a while. And I've got to take this more seriously. And I'm seeing more people do that kind of thing. Like, no, you know, stay back, <clears throat> use the, follow the arrows on the floor, you know, uh, and m much more people, many more people doing that. Yeah. And that's a great example. So yesterday over lunch, I went to mail a package. And when I got to the UPS store, it looked like there was a line out the door. And I was like, what, why are there so many people mailing a package? And it was because everyone was standing six feet apart that there were really only three people in the store, but they had, you know, they had properly social distance. So I think you're, you're, I'm really seeing people follow those guidelines um, more as, you know, personal requirements and not just suggestions. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing more and more of that too. And not that I go out a lot, uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> the odd bank uh, trip and the uh, grocery store yeah. are about the only places I go right now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, I'm a little too afraid to go to, uh, you know, just wandering out in the, the neighborhood. And even when I do walk the dog, I've got a mask on because I don't know who I'm going to run into or, you know, who's, <clears throat> if anyone is not going to be uh, paying attention, you know, and they want their dogs to play and play. You know, if they don't get along, we're going to be face to face pulling our dogs apart. You know, I don't want to be near you. Type thing. So that that leads me to a question I like asking everyone. When was the last time you sat down and ate in a restaurant? That would have been mid-March. Okay. Yeah. When uh, yeah. things were shut down here, you know, mid-March and that would have been it. And I, I, to be honest, I'm in no rush to go back. I know that. <laughs> You know, uh, I have li a mild case of bronchitis, you know, uh, which okay. can with allergies and, you know, even yeah. cat candy can set it off. So right now I'm not going around any crowd, you know. Exactly. Uh, especially with a re respiratory uh, disease like, uh, you know, COVID, you know, if cat dander or dog dander can set off my, uh, my um, uh, bronchitis, well, there's, I'm not going to take a chance with getting that from somebody else and, you know, getting COVID and that's really going to impact me, you know. Yeah, exactly. And especially what you do as a profession, if you have, you know, issues with your, your lungs, your voice, it's very difficult to run your, your podcast and your radio show. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, I, I think the, I think the last time, I'm not sure if it was you or not, but I had uh, allergies or something or, uh, you know, and just, it, it was tough getting through that, you know, because I had the sore throat and everything. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Oh, well, a any other, anything else that's going on down in Florida? Uh, any, you know, hurricanes? I, I hate. Uh, no hurricanes, obviously celebrating the Tampa Bay Lightning Stanley Cup championship. <laughs> so speaking of virtual, not, uh, you know, usually during the playoffs, my family, we have people over, we have parties. Uh, so there was none of that this year. It was just us in the house. Didn't go to the parade, obviously. So uh, they different. Still have the they uh, they had a boat parade, uh, which made sense conceptually, but then they had a big event at the football stadium, which is where the social distancing and mindfulness certainly fell apart. Uh, <laughs> so we watched that on uh, television, which wasn't quite the same as being there. But you know, you gotta you gotta be mindful, like you said, of of the situation. So yeah. What started off with good intentions uh, fell apart. Correct. And, and, uh, that's too bad. You know, hopefully everyone comes out of that okay. Exactly. Yeah. But, oh, well. Um, what, uh, sorry, there was a question I just had about uh, hurricanes. Oh, um, <clears throat> there's a hurricane right now, uh, Delta, I think. Yes. Is that, is that heading towards you guys? I, I caught it this morning, but I didn't see where it was going. 
Yeah, currently I believe it's crossing over the Yucatan Peninsula oh. and projecting uh, if it, you know, it would be, because it's so far away, but it would probably be more, unfortunately, Texas, Louisiana, the panel, uh, the panhandle of Florida. That has the potential to be a very problematic storm because of the low pressure of it already and it's organized organized storms that get into the gulf of mexico where it hits warm water becomes uh usually chaotic so certainly you know something for our our friends and colleagues in those areas to keep an eye on as always well hopefully everyone's okay uh, and, and gets through that okay and you know with any luck it dissipates uh, on some level uh, exactly. I know places like uh, corpus christi and uh you know Houston and some of those places just got hit, you know, a few weeks ago, they, you know, they, they don't need to get hit again. That's correct. You already have, you know, you get multiple hits and you have that ground saturation. You already have an area starting to flood and it just really creates secondary problems. Oh yeah. And, you know, during COVID too, and you've got all the problems with, you know, evacuations, where do you go and, you know, uh, <clears throat> where do you stay, you know, and, and I know there's been some issues with, um, uh shelters you know that they can't take as many people or they they've got to find a different room and i i'm not sure maybe it was you that told me that uh, uh hotels are being used uh now yeah because like you said if a school is typically a shelter and it's normally can hold a thousand people and now it can only hold 300 you have 700 displaced people so mm -hmm. you've certainly seen um, state emergency management systems try to utilize hotels and motels because where do, you know, you want people to evacuate, you have to give them someplace to go. So it's, it's becoming, it's quite a, a challenge. It's, uh, trying to manage a hurricane during a pandemic is um, something hopefully we won't see again in our lifetimes. Well, you know, we used to say 100-year <laughs> storms, at, you know, and 50-year storms, and they seem to be occurring on a greater frequency, you know, as we talked about in our climate change talk. You know, those exactly. uh, one in a million storms are, uh, you know, much more frequent than they ever used to be. Yeah, and I think people are starting to understand that that, that once in 500 years is annualized over thousands of years. So you still could have one 2020, 21, and 22 and then over a 1500 year time period, that's once in 500 years. So kind of a misnomer. There, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, somehow <laughs> it would be nice if these, <laughs> terms, uh, you know, uh, kind of, if mother nature would back off a little bit. What if yeah, that be? it'd be nice. It, you know, it, it doesn't seem to end, you know, and uh, then we've got the wildfires out in California. Yep. You know, um, I, I don't know if you know, um, uh, Julia Hall, Julia Halsney. I hope I remember her name right. Um, at uh, eBay Mud, she was talking about uh, some of the wildfires out in California. That uh, you know, the, it's massive out there. You know, yeah, it, it, it's destroyed. Um, to put it in perspective, if I recall correctly, the amount of size it's destroyed our the size of our province of New Brunswick. Yeah, the the scale and you know, those wildfires and wildfires in Australia, the scope and scale and size is just hard to really fathom. So how, how do, here's a question for you, you know, how do we manage those wildfires? Because they seem to be getting bigger and bigger every year. Is it climate change, climate change that's causing it? Or is it something else that's causing it? You know, our um, negligence in, mm. you know, fire safety and things like that. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's probably threefold. One, certainly fire safety, like you, you know, the wildfires in California started from a gender reveal party that either had mm. an explosive or a firework or something that set it off. So why are we lighting off fireworks or things? Um, you certainly have with climate change and with the effect of unusually dry uh, winters, right? You have you have areas that are just not getting rain. Um, and then I think another, another issue is a lot of areas are not good at proactively burning, right? Forest fires are actually good for forests because they, you know, there's a lot of ecological reasons 
for mm -hmm. them to happen. And it's pretty typical for those to happen. Um, but then you introduce people into the mix. You've got to have controlled fires so you're not burning down homes. And I think you're seeing some jurisdictions that have been more proactive about those controlled preventative burns. And I think that's another thing that needs to be to be looked at. Uh, when I was in Australia a few years back, I was up uh, visiting family in Darwin, which is uh, up in the north uh, of Australia. And uh, we were taking a, uh, a tour off in the back of what, you know, to me was the outback, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it was the outback. And I kept seeing all these, uh, you know, fires in the distance. And I'm going, there's a fire. What are you guys doing about that? And said, oh, that's nothing. That's just burn, burning itself out, you know, and they, it was all planned. Mm -hmm. They had the, these culverts and everything. And they said, no, it's planned fires. Don't worry about it. See it all the time. I went, exactly. Really? You know, it kind of freaked me out because they even drove me through one. <laughs> you know, you look out the car window and there's a little fire and they said, yeah, you know, that's fine. It's normal. And it was, yeah. based, they were doing what you just said. Yeah. You have to have those small fires to prevent the large fires. Yeah. Certainly. So unfortunately, you know, um, sometimes those uh, big fires get out of hand and uh, yep. you know, you end up with, uh, you know, the blue mountains in Australia, just, you know, a light. Exactly. And unfortunately, California, who you know, has massive, the worst, I believe, in uh, history. <clears throat> yep. And then that's part of, you know, population density. Why do people build near forests? Why do people in Florida or floodplain areas build near the water? like typically not a good idea and you pay for those during a natural disaster. Yeah. So yeah. any other uh, topics keeping you up at night? No, I think that's enough. That's enough doom and gloom <laughs> for today. <laughs> doom and gloom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite a bit, uh, unfortunately. Well, uh, I'll let you go because uh, you probably want to rehearse for your uh, uh, speech at, uh, well, I guess in uh, two hours. Two hours. Well, I've got some time. Or, yeah. You know, and I'm going to take a quick two minute break and have a drink of water so that, uh, you know, my voice doesn't completely disappear. I still have lots of time to go. Yet. Absolutely. You've got four and a half hours. <laughs> All right, Alex, it was great uh, speaking great. with you again. Thanks for popping in, James. And, uh, you know, feel free to jump in uh, after your uh, talk uh, later on today if you want and give feedback or, you know, anything that, uh, you know, because it's only uh, 30 30, 40 minutes there, you know, you may have other things you wanted to say and feel free, you know, as a bonus. Okay. Back. Sounds I good. Know you, I know you and I have something scheduled in a couple of weeks anyway, so. We do. I look forward to speaking again. Okay. Take care, James. All right. Thanks, Alex. Thanks. Bye. Bye now. So that was James uh, Green. He's speaking uh, at the conference later today. I'm just going to take a quick uh, drink of water. I'll be right back in just a minute. If you like that video, thumbs up. If you didn't like that video, thumbs down. But leave me a message and let me know your thoughts. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. And in the meantime, stay prepared, everybody.